Hey guys, welcome to our Eastern Heights Baptist Wednesday night lesson. I am Pastor Chris Gustafson, and we are continuing our look at some different heresies of the Bible. We've gone through a number of them so far. We've talked about Gnosticism and Arianism and Marcionism and Dantes last week. Uh, we looked at those. So this morning we have two that we're going to be looking at. These go hand in hand together, uh, dealing with primarily the nature of Jesus Christ, so understanding who Jesus is. So there's two concepts of the person of Jesus that seems to be in conflict with each other. We have an understanding of Jesus' divinity, and we under, have an understanding of Jesus' humanity. So we understand this is that Jesus is fully human, but also he's fully divine. Now, that's a kind of hard concept to grasp, which is understandable. As a matter of fact, we really wouldn't understand it if it wasn't that the scriptures revealed it to us and allowed us to understand it and explain it to us, but also show to us why it is so important. So it's not surprising that there is heresies that develop in trying to understand that humanity and that divinity of Jesus Christ and how they fit together. The Ebonites uh, maintained a, a close connection to the Hebrew Bible. That is what we often call the Old Testament scriptures. And therefore, in holding to that, they held on to the necessity of observing the Mosaic law. One of the aspects of that is being God being one. And so they argued that there's no way that you could have this Trinity. And instead that God, what he did was he adopted Jesus as baptism. So Jesus was a regular man, and then he got adopted at his baptism. Therefore, they rejected that idea that Jesus has always existed. And among that, I also rejected the, the virgin birth, the virgin conception, and then the virgin birth that comes out of that with Jesus, which is one of the things we talk about at Christmas time. Understanding that virgin birth is how we understand that God could be both fully human, or how Jesus could be both fully human and fully divine. Now, the other group was the opposite side of that. So the, the other side of the coin, where the one group said that Jesus was human and then God kind of a, a adopted him, the Dossius proposed that the Son of God never fully took on human flesh, and that this body that Jesus had was an illusion. So they're coming more out of the Gnostic side of it and saying that here you, you can't be physical, you can't have a physical body, the physical body is bad, the spirit is good. And so for them, Jesus was in disguise, sort of like what the Greek gods would do. They would hide themselves and appear to be humans, but not really be humans. So you see two sides of the coin, the one side of emphasizing Jesus's humanity, and the other side is, is going to emphasize, know the spiritual aspect. And then the problem in emphasizing that is they got rid of the other one. So the one saying humanity, humane, you know, humanity right there, but he's not divine. And the other side saying, well, well he's, he's divine, but there's, there's no humanity in there at all. But that presents a really important question. Why is it important that Jesus was fully human and fully divine? Well, it was necessary for our salvation that he had to be both fully human and fully divine. He had to be human to be able to be our sacrifice, but he had to be divine to be the perfect and final sacrifice there. So both of those are essential to our salvation. And as we know in the Christmas story, the virgin birth explains how he can be both human and divine. A couple passages that kind of speak to that is uh, John chapter 1, verses 4 and 2 says, this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So John there is emphasizing to believe in Jesus Christ, you must believe that he was fully human, but also fully divine. Then Hebrews chapter 2 kind of explains, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. In other words, Jesus had to be human to die on the cross for us. So those two passages dealing with each of the uh, situations. One, he had to be human. If you deny him, if you only say he's, he's, he's spiritual, then you're not of God. The other side saying that there, there had to be humanity so that he could die as our our sacrifice. So you can see where John uses that term spirit, dealing with those who want to say, oh, Jesus is only spiritual, not human. No, he, he also is flesh. The other side is also saying, hey, he was flesh, but he was also divine, so that he could be able to save us from our sins, and therefore be the perfect sacrifice, and then be resurrected. So where do we see this today? Well, we, we see both of them 
in play. The, the first one we see is often this popular opinion that wants to see Jesus as being a human being, a good human being, a prophet, a teacher, uh, somebody used by God, but they still want to keep him as human the whole time. So they're going to answer, you know, did Jesus ever sin? Yes, Jesus sinned. Did Jesus ever mess up? Yes, Jesus messed up. But he was a really good guy, and he's the sort of guy that we should model our lives on. Uh, another play that we see this is the other side. So you don't really run into a lot of people who want to deny his humanity. But there is sometimes in the church this play of overemphasizing the role of the Spirit in Christian living. And when the Spirit is divorced from the Word in the gospel, uh, which is the event of Jesus talking about, we can end up on this other end. So kind of playing that out for you a little bit is we find sometimes where people will start talking about getting messages from God and getting these insights from the Holy Spirit, which is great. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be working in you and helping you understand Scripture. But then when they start talking about how I don't really need the Scriptures, I'm already getting messages from God, or I don't need church, or I don't need accountability, or I don't need anything. It's just me and God. All right, now they've emphasized this, this spiritual aspect and are in the process of denying the humanity of Jesus. And we see this a lot happens in the church, and people sort of get in this. And then what, what's interesting about this is they emphasize, they overemphasize the spiritual aspect. And then eventually, as they emphasize the spiritual aspect, and they don't focus on the humanity also of Jesus, as they lose that understanding of the humanity of what's seen in the gospel, as they emphasize the spiritual, eventually they abandon both and just abandon Jesus and the concept of salvation and church all together. So when you start seeing someone going down that road or you find yourself down that road, you need to stop and say, wait a minute, I need to go to the whole gospel story, which talks to me both about the humanity of Jesus and about him being divine and seeing that whole play that goes into that. So from Genesis to Revelation, we have that, that from the Jesus preexisted was the agent of creation involved in that. And then we have the Advent story where he comes down and takes on flesh, then he dies at the cross of our sacrifice, he's resurrected, and he's coming back. And that becomes the whole story that we need to see that's going in there and is at play. So this brings to us two good questions we need to be asking ourselves. First of all, how do we keep our focus on Jesus' as humanity and divinity? How do we hold those two ideas? Will you remind, me, uh, re, uh, remind you what I said earlier, is that the way we understand this is the scriptures. That's how we come to understand that Jesus was both, you, you had taken on flesh, but also was fully divine. The way we understand that is through the scriptures, which means that we need to keep reading the scriptures. We need to stay focused on the scriptures. We need to put ourselves in places in which the scriptures are being taught. We need to be in places of worship. We need to be involved in church. It is great and it is wonderful to study the scriptures on your own, but you need to be studying the scriptures in a group also. Otherwise, you can start writing your own theology and get into some very dangerous areas and you're not going to have anybody there to help correct you. So that is a role of the church and why it is essential that the Christian be involved in church. The second thing is seeing how do we correct it when it is wrong. When we, we find that we're erring in one of those two areas, we got to be open, first of all, to that correction, and how do we correct it? And again, that is by surrounding yourself with godly teachers who can explain that by reading godly authors who are going to talk about that. But I, hands down, the very best way is being involved in church. Now, I know these are strange times in, indeed for us, but you can still do that and being involved in Bible study, even without being present physically, you know, through the use of Zoom and connecting into the Bible studies. But to neglect that, to neglect that Bible study, that church, you are setting yourself up to fall into one of these heresies. And I know we have a sincerity that we want to say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay faithful no matter what. But we won't, and we will get led astray, and we need other Christians around there to watch out for us. So let me encourage you. I enjoy the Bible studies, but you need to be connecting in with a group. If you're not, and you're interested in doing that, please, please contact me, and I'd be glad to try to get you into a group. Even if you don't live around here, uh, we have ways of connecting with us or with other churches. I want to remind you, our next two Wednesdays, we're going to be off uh, celebrating Christmas. We will be having church and invite you to our Christmas Eve service that is going to be on Christmas Eve at 5 p.m., and we'd enjoy having you. We will also be broadcasting that 
online for everybody. Will you guys join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your scriptures that reveal to us truths that we could never discover on our own. We thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus, for him taking on flesh, for him living among us in that perfect life, and then being willing to be that sacrifice that died for us on the cross. Thank you for his resurrection. We look forward to his return. And we pray that you will continue to be at work in us and encourage us to gather together with others, to study the scriptures, to grow closer to you. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in two weeks, or you can catch us on Sunday in person here or online. God bless, and have a great week.